what was interesting about this project initially was that it wasn't the client came to us wanting a forecasting project, which I don't really see as, you know, a really good use of AI. And I like to start each project with understanding what the problem is. And they were having a problem because they couldn't find patients. And I said, well, that's a good use of AI rather than trying to forecast what you will find. Your company designs solutions for the pharmaceutical industry. You work primarily in marketing and sales, but you've done a number of projects. There was a project that uh, I'd like to dig in for, for a little bit, which is in the uh, detecting diseases. And you also made the use of social media and, and a variety of uh, advanced technologies. Why don't we cover that and try to understand how, uh, you know, how AI is being used in uh, helping detecting diseases? Sure, there's loads and loads of ways. And I think this is one of the best use cases for AI for marketing as well, because it's, you know, finding part of marketing is finding the person for your product. We were doing one, pro I can, I can, loads of examples. I can give you one that's interesting. Um, it was a rare genetic condition. So children were born with that condition. And if they weren't treated, they would be dead before they were teenagers. So the problem was that it was an ultra rare condition. So that meant that, you know, 99.9 .9 something percent of all doctors would never see a patient in their life. So it was really like finding a needle in a haystack to find the patients. And it was really critical to find them because these children would die if they weren't treated. So what was interesting about this project initially was that it wasn't, the client came to us wanting a forecasting project, which I don't really see as, you know, a really good use of AI. And I like to start each project with understanding what the problem is. And they were having a problem because they couldn't find patients. And I said, well, that's a good use of AI rather than trying to forecast what you will find. So we then were looking at the children in this, you know, with this condition and looking at the clinical trial data, looking at pictures of the children, one thing that struck us, and I guess it's because it was a genetic condition, is the facial features of these children was quite similar. And so it occurred to me that what we could do is actually do face recognition programs to recognize children from photos that had this condition. So then you could put that online and it could then go and check against any uploaded photos that it could access of, of children and babies and identify them. But there are a few things that are the next step that you, we had to think carefully of. And one was quite interesting. So I was on a flight from England to Hong Kong and I was on the plane and I, I just kind of stretched and I, my hand went there and I felt this mole on my shoulder. And I thought, that's odd, I haven't felt that before. And when I went to the hotel, I looked in the mirror and thought, oh, better check it's not melanoma. So I went to Google and just typed in melanoma. So I was in a hotel in Hong Kong and within 10 minutes, I got a text on my phone inviting me to a melanoma talk near my house in England. And I knew that that was no coincidence because I'd never had anything to do with melanoma in my life. So I felt very invaded and it felt very creepy. And I thought, we need to find these children, but you do not want the parents to feel invaded. You want it to be what they need and what they're looking for um, at that time. You want them to not feel horrible. So we had to think about that. What's the best way to let these people know that their children need help and what the help is? So the next thing that happened to me at that time, <laughs> you have to take a lot of personal examples when you're thinking through projects sometimes, was that, so the first thing is I didn't want people to feel like I felt and it didn't feel good to feel that invaded. The second thing was I bought an automatic pet feeder and then every website I went to served up ads of automatic pet feeders and I thought so stupid because you know there's no strategy there you know I've got a pet you could develop a really good relationship with me where I would buy a lot if you actually sold me the right products because I've got an automatic pet feeder. So, but I thought, but that's using retargeting cookies. And I thought we could do the same thing with our face recognition. So you could drop a cookie and then let that follow the person, then do a Google ad buy for people with that cookies, but not just a Google ad buy on anything they search. So they would have to be searching on something really relevant to that condition.
And what we found when we talked to parents was what the first thing they noticed of children that, that something was wrong with their child was the inability to potty train. And so we would put the Google ad buy for things like inability to potty train. And then if that parent went and searched on that, then they would get an ad which would have a picture of a child that looked like their child, which they could click onto and it would take them to a website about that condition and they could self-diagnose. So, you know, I think that's kind of thinking strategically, how can we help everyone get help the children stay alive and be, a, you know, live a normal life um, and also help the, the company find the patients that it needs to help.